Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Coffee with a Pastor. Give everybody a few moments here to get signed on and find us. It is Thursday, right? Oh, we have two. Hey, no, Naomi. Hey, Aurelia. <clears throat> hey, Tori. Glad y'all are all here. Haddon and I went for a run this morning. The weather's so beautiful. I hope um, I hope you're getting out, enjoying nature. Hey, Zach. Blues Clues. All right. Tori getting the boys settled in with Blues Clues. Naomi's going to be doing some yard work from afar while listening. I did some yard work yesterday. I'm paying uh, because my allergies are um, pretty bad. I have an even deeper voice than Monday <laughs> from all this. And I keep telling myself it's just allergies. It's not corona, but I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I'll give it just another minute and see who all can sign on. Uh, while we're waiting, I wanted to show you what mug I brought today. This is my, what I call, my uh, Bold Lion mug. Check out all the sweet features there. All right, so I, uh, I've probably had this 10 years, maybe 11 or 12 years. I kind of designed this and had it printed on a mug and we also have a, a picture of it hanging up in the house. I actually, <laughs> I ordered a stamp with it. So, um, hey Paige. So, uh, I, I, in my 20s, yeah, I would have been in my 20s, <clears throat> um, I, I really came to love this proverb that we find in the book of Proverbs. I don't remember where to find it now, a quick, Google search would tell you, but it says, the wicked man flees, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So here's my little bold lion. I can tend to, because of whether nature or nurture, probably both, I can tend to, uh, to be fearful, to be afraid, to be anxious. And so in my 20s and early 30s, I adopted that kind of as my verse that uh, to be to be bold to be uh, don't don't flee don't run away there's actually nobody chasing you those are not real <laughs> threats those are just perceived so stand and be bold and stand up for what you believe in so I made it put it on a mug there's some vines there there's a torch there's a shield it all has has meaning all the images have meaning um, but it's given me some strength and I've uh, it, it doesn't mean as much to me these days because um, some of that stuff that I wanted to inculcate into my character and into my family's culture, it's become secondhand. It's become just part of our culture now. I do remember several years ago I was showing it to a friend and she said, that's a really, really cute dancing lion that you have on there. And I was like, no, that's not a dancing lion. That's a ferocious, butt-kicking lion. And... Um, She's probably right. It needs to be more of a dancing lion. It needs to be more of a playful lion uh, that engages the world with joy and with dance and doesn't always have to be defensive and fighting. And that's something I think I've been learning over the years as well, certainly in my faith, as I've moved away from deconstructing faith and um, having to fight with everybody around me about getting them to believe just like I do. Um, you know, be more playful uh, about it about these things, so I like what Tori said, Aslan was playful but also revered, yeah. Um, one of the ways I'm trying to be playful these days is to incorporate more poetry. I talked about this on Monday, more poetry into my life. Poetry uh, speaks truth that facts don't know anything about. So I hope you are, it was giving me Narnia vibes, Paige said, I hope you have found some poetry to read these days. Hey Joyce, uh, I believe Joyce mentioned Mary Oliver the other day to us. Somebody did. Um, so I brought a poem to read this morning. 
uh, I want to talk about anxiety real quick. So it's the poetry is helping me with some of my anxiety. I woke up at 4.30 this morning, no alarm or, or anything. I just did out of anxiety about everything that's going on. I'm really kind of anxious about the stimulus bill that Congress, the Senate's trying to get passed. Um, I really hope that this isn't just another corporate bailout with uh, a few pennies tossed to the people. That might be what it is, but that's what we had a decade ago, and that has exacerbated wealth inequality. We're, we're back to Great Depression uh, era levels of wealth inequality, and a lot of that has to do um, with the way money was handed out, what, 12 years ago now or so. So I hope we don't have that and then another dozen years that exacerbates wealth inequality even more to where so many of us are working in the gig economy and just getting by, working multiple part-time jobs, whatever it is. All of these are policies, I think, that have something to do with the way money is handed out to corporations um, and the people, the people, us. We're not taken care of and that's the responsibility of government. Here ends my little rant about government. Sorry, uh, but anxiety, I woke up at 4.30, feeling a bunch of stress, couldn't go back to sleep. I'm starting to get stress acne. <laughs> Maybe you can relate to that. That's one of the things that happens to me when I'm just stressed out and my body says, hey, you're stressed, let me show you. It's not voluntary, it's involuntary. Let me show you how stressed you are. Um, I'm stress eating. That's not a good thing to do when uh, you're trying to conserve your food, <laughs> when you just start stress eating it all. So I need, I need to chill out with that. And it makes me feel like junk anyways, which is probably why I'm going for runs in the morning with Hatton. So I'm trying to find some respite. I'm trying to find some peace where I can. Poetry is one of those. So let me read you another, another poem, uh, again by Wendell Berry. W-E-N-D-E-L-L -L, Wendell, one of my favorite poets. He was a professor, I think, at the University of Kentucky. He's a lifelong Baptist, but don't hold that against him. Um, a great man. He's an activist uh, for the environment. He has really spent his life well. But let me read you. This poem is called The Peace of Wild Things. The Peace of Wild Things. And he writes... When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and I lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. And I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So much of it speaks to me and speaks to where I know so many of you are when despair for the world grows in me and I, I wake up in the middle of the night. Nothing woke me up exactly, but I, I'm awake and it's because I'm afraid of what this is going to mean for my life, what this is going to mean for my children's lives, you know, I can, and he says, go out, go out, go sit under a tree, go sit by uh, some water, some still water. Even if you have to take a bowl of water out with you and sit on your front step, whatever you have to do just to have some water, watch some roly polies whom my kids have all named Bill for some reason. Bill the roly poly. We see them everywhere. Just go watch some nature. They're not taxing their lives the way we do. They have a lot to teach us about peace, they have a lot to teach us about presence. They have a lot to teach us about connection and interconnectedness. I've said this before, but developmental theorists will say that um, at the beginning of growing or the least mature stage, we, we begin dependent. We're completely dependent 
on others for everything. And then as we grow, we move to independence. And that's good. Independence is good. Um, and unfortunately, so many of us in society, we stop there. We stop at independence. Uh, but some developmental theorists, the ones I read, would say that the next step of maturity, the next step of growing, is you move past independence and you move to interdependence. You move to a state of seeing the world that we are connected. We need each other. We are interdependent. I think nature can teach us that as well. So as you go out and you sit and you're watching the squirrels, you're watching the roly polies, you're watching the trees respond to the wind, think about the interdependence of our lives. As Congress passes this stimulus bill, you knew, you knew I was coming back here. As Congress passes this stimulus bill, think about the interdependence of our lives. Think about how we are all woven together. We are all God's children. Think about who is going to be most harmed by these policies over the next decade, 15 years, things like that. And let your voices be known to your legislators. Speak out, advocate for those with whom you are connected, I am connected, who are voiceless and need a voice. So, I love you all. I encourage you keep doing this work to connect with peace, however that is for you. Connect with family members, loved ones, friends. Um, as we keep saying, I'm very encouraged by how this community is doing that, about how we are connecting to one another. It's a lot of work, I agree. It's a lot of work, but um, it's worth it. It's fruitful. It's good work. It's the most human work we are called to do to connect with each other. I pray that God would give you strength to keep doing that. Courage, creativity, patience. All of this is grace. I pray you would find that grace and start by going and sitting outside some. Have a great Thursday. Love you all. Bye-bye. I'm still here because I can't push this dumb button. It's so small.